Okay, so here is a nested sphere problem or a concentric spheres of charge problem uh, where you're asked to calculate the electric field um, for various different uh, cases. Uh, in this one, uh, there is a solid insulating sphere of radius A. Uh, it carries a positive charge of Q equals uh, 3 microcoulombs. And it's uniformly distributed throughout its volume, uh, which means there is a charge density rho that I can define for this. Concentric with the sphere is a conducting spherical shell. It's got inner radius B and outer radius C, 10 and 15 centimeters. And it has a net charge of Q net, which is negative 1 microcoulomb. So negative 1 microcoulomb is the total charge on the conductor. And if the insulating sphere wasn't there, all of that negative 1 microcoulomb would have been on the outer surface. But because there is an insulating sphere sitting at, in the hollow part of the conducting shell, it's going to induce some of the charge. So out of the negative 1 microcoulomb, some of it will be on the inner surface and the rest will be on the outer surface. And that's what we are asked to calculate. Okay. Now, these problems are perfect candidates for Gauss's law because there is a great deal of spherical symmetry involved and we can choose our Gaussian surfaces to relate the flux to the charge. So Gauss's law that says um, the total flux through a Gaussian surface or the surface integral of the electric field over a Gaussian surface is equal to the total charge enclosed or charge inside divided by epsilon naught. Okay. So in this case, since I'm interested in the charge on the inner surface, right, I will choose a Gaussian sphere to go through the body of the conductor uh, because I do know that um, the electric field is zero inside the body of the conductor. When you have electrostatic conditions, so let me choose a Gaussian sphere, right? This is just a cross-sectional view of that. So imagine a perfect sphere here like this. Oops. Okay. Call it the surface S. And uh, since the electric field is zero everywhere on the surface, uh, there is no flux through the surface or no surface integral. So this whole left-hand side is zero. That's equal to Q in by epsilon naught, uh, which means Q in is zero. And Q in is nothing but uh, the charge Q that's sitting on the insulating sphere plus whatever charge is on the inner surface, right? So that's equal to Q plus Q inner, uh, which means Q inner is nothing but negative Q. So it induces exactly an equal but opposite charge, negative Q, on the inner surface. And the rest of it will be on the outer surface. So one way I can figure out the Q outer is if this conductor was neutral, if a minus Q came here, there would be a plus Q on the outer surface. But it's not neutral. It has a net charge. So I have to just add the net charge to it. Okay. So charge on the outer surface is Q plus Q net. The total charge on the whole system. Right. And we can quickly check if you add up the inner and the outer surface charges, it should be the net charge, which it is, right? If you want it in terms of numbers, um, the inner surface has a charge of negative 3 microcoulombs, and the outer surface has, you know, this, this is your 3 microcoulomb, and this is your negative 1 microcoulomb. So when you add them, you get a 2 microcoulomb. When I add a minus 3 and a positive 2, I get my negative 1 um, as the net charge. Okay, so, um, so that's all about uh, part A. In part B onwards, they want us to calculate the electric field at various different points, right? So I've tried to write a few things here to take us through pretty quickly. So, so here they want us to find the electric field inside the insulating sphere for R less than A in particular at r equals 3 centimeters. Remember, a is 5 centimeters. So, so your point p is somewhere here. I have drawn a little r here. I hope you can see. And what I want to do is to, uh, you know, if somebody says, get me the electric field at this point, I see that the electric field is radially outwards at that point. 
and there's spherical symmetry. So I want to draw a Gaussian sphere passing through that point, right? And let me see if this works. I'll try to see if uh, I can just get this Gaussian sphere. Yeah, perfect. So, so there's a Gaussian sphere of radius r. That's my surface s, right? It's my surface s. And in all these problems, you know, these are the steps that we'll do. So I'll show a few steps here. Later on, I'll, I'll cut it off a little bit. So, so this is integral uh, e dot dA, e is radially outwards. So is the dA vector, which is the outward drawn normal. So that's also radially outward dA. So e dot dA will just be e times dA times cosine zero. Uh, that's equal to charge enclosed, and charge enclosed is whatever charge is in here, right? So it's not all of Q, but it's going to be a fraction of Q, right? And uh, to figure out what that Q in would be, right, uh, you, you, can, you can say it's the charge density multiplied by the volume that's enclosed uh, by the Gaussian surface. So let's put a Vs here. That's the amount of charge in there divided by epsilon naught, right? And I argue that E has the same value everywhere on the surface. So I can pull it out. Cosine zero is one. So this whole thing ends up being E times integral dA will give me the surface area of the sphere, which is four pi r squared, right? So E times the area of the Gaussian surface and that's equal to the charge density rho, which is total charge divided by four thirds pi a cubed. And the volume of the Gaussian surface is four thirds pi r cubed. And then you have divided by epsilon naught. Or you could have also just uh, figured out the q in separately. You know, q in is rho times the volume of the Gaussian surface. And you can show that q in is just a fraction of q and the fraction is r cubed over a cubed and that's what you're seeing here uh, once you cancel off the four thirds pi here and uh, we can cancel off the r squared r squared uh, with the r cubed so i'm left with just one r here and um, so so this will give me e is equal to uh, one over four pi epsilon naught that's k e and then I have a capital Q, and then I have an E cubed on the bottom, and I'm left with just an R. So, so a, a put four pi times epsilon naught, one over four pi times epsilon naught is the KE, Q over A cubed times R. So it's a linearly increasing function, right? So E increases with R, uh, it starts with R equals zero, it is zero here, and then it keeps increasing until you hit the surface at r equals a. Right? And if you want the value at r equals 3 centimeters, you just substitute r equals 3 and a is 5 centimeters, convert them to meter. And I have done that already to save some time. So if you um, just substitute your values, you end up getting 6.47 mega. That's 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. If you want to calculate it at r equals five centimeters, you just substitute. Um, you know, if, if r is equal to a, it'll end up being k q over a squared, right? So then it comes out to be 10.8 mega newtons per coulomb. Okay. Same way, if you try to keep calculating uh, the electric field at a point between the insulating sphere and the conducting shell, or r between a and b. For example, eight centimeters, which is less than the 10 centimeters here. You go through the same um, Gauss's law. In this case, you know, your Gaussian sphere uh, has to pass through the point. Point P is eight centimeters from the center. I've drawn it there. Uh, let's hope I can fit this Gaussian surface there. So I'm going to draw a Gaussian surface of radius or Gaussian sphere passing through the point. Perfect. Um, so then I can apply Gauss's law to this, you know, the, the electric field is radially outwards everywhere. And the dA vector is also that way, just like before. So there's nothing new there. dA vector is in the same direction. 
So this whole on the left hand side, you know, of Gauss's law, this just ends up being E times the area of the Gaussian surface times cosine zero, which will be one. And that's equal to charge enclosed, but now the charge enclosed is just the total charge Q and that's on the that's on the insulating sphere, right? So this is Q over epsilon naught. So once again, uh, we can write this down as E is equal to one over four pi times epsilon naught is KE. And then you have Q divided by R squared. So I hope this is clear. I've been using KE as one over four pi epsilon naught. And it's radially outwards. I, if I want the value at R equals eight centimeters, I just convert that to meters and I substitute here. Q is three microcoulombs, right? So if I've done this here to save time, so KEQ over R squared gives me 4.21 mega newtons per coulomb. Okay, and if I want it at R equals B, that's 10 centimeters, um, I can substitute in there and that's about 2.7 mega newtons per coulomb, okay? Now, um, moving on, uh, we have, uh, what's the electric field at any point P outside, right? At a particular, maybe about 20 centimeters from the center here, right? So once again, uh, I want to take a Gaussian uh, sphere passing through this point P and let me hope. Let's hope this fits in here. Uh, if I bring it here and make it go through point P, right? but I would be drawing that if I didn't have this already. Um, so once again, exact same thing, E is that way, dA vector is also in the same direction. That's the dA vector. So E dot dA is E times dA. Uh, integral will just give you E times the area of the Gaussian uh, sphere, S. So that's four pi R squared. And in this case, the charge enclosed, if you look at it, you know, the charge enclosed is the total charge on the system. Uh, the Q and the minus Q, they cancel off. So you're left with whatever is on the outer surface, which is your Q plus Q net, right? So I could say my Q in is either Q outer, what is on the outer surface, which is also nothing but Q plus Q net. See, I could write either one of these, Q plus Q net, divided by epsilon naught. So now I can say E is equal to, it looks like KE Q over R squared, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is KE, and Q is Q plus Q net, divided by R squared. See, once again, radially outwards, if all of this is positive, Right. In, in our case, it ended up being two microcoulombs. So, so this whole thing here, you know, this is the two uh, microcoulombs, right? That's the two microcoulombs. And if you want the R to be 20 centimeters, that's your 0.2 meters, you know, you square it, right? Um, and I have done this already here. So if you calculate it, you know, you see um, the electric field at 20 centimeters has dropped to 0.45 mega newtons per coulomb and if i want it right at the surface you know the electric field is 0 0.8 approximately 0 0.8 mega newtons per coulomb you see so there's a discontinuity here right uh, you see that the electric field itself is zero between b and c but there is an electric field if you approach it from the left and there is an electric field here if you approach it from the right you see so now, with, given all this information, they want us to draw a graph of the electric field versus distance. Okay, I have already kind of drawn it for us to save some time here. So um, as you can see, the electric field is, uh, increases linearly inside the insulator and in between there is a one over R squared dependence and then drops to complete zero in the body of the conductor and then it's one over R squared again, you know, outside of the um, conducting shell. And if I'm trying to draw all this uh, in the, um, you know, draw the electric field vectors, uh, you can see that the field vectors is radially outwards, um, stops totally here, discontinuity is there, and then again, it's radially outwards um, 